There's no question that Alice Cooper ruled the quasi-androgynous theatrical hard rock scene in the 70s. And in the 90s, it was Marilyn Manson making parents nervous with similar tactics. But that formula was also adopted in the heavy metal 80s by another band with light horror theatrics and a flamboyant frontman with a gender flip name that bridged the two. Today we're going to take a look at the Los Angeles based heavy metal band Lizzie Borden. Lizzie Borden was formed by the Harges brothers in 1983 with vocalist Gregory Charles Harges, a.k.a. Lizzie Borden, and drummer Joey Scott Harges. They'd be joined by bassist Mike Davis and guitarist Gene Allen and Tony Matusik, who had a badass eye patch. Greg and the band would adopt the name Lizzie Borden, a reference to a real woman who had been the prime suspect of her parents' grisly axe murder in 1892. Borden was acquitted, but the sensational story made national news, and she became a pop culture figure, even getting her own creepy nursery rhyme. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. Yikes. I realized I wanted to create a whole um, character for myself, and I needed a name. I create different characters for each record. So I give them a name too, so it's kind of a split personality through the whole thing. So, But the original Lizzie Borden character, that's just popped into my head and it was based on an axe murderess in the 1800s. The band caught their first big break when Metal Blade chose their track Rod of Iron for the fourth volume of the Metal Massacre series in 1983. After signing with Metal Blade Records, Lizzie Borden would quickly release an EP in 1984 titled Give Em The Axe. With three great original melodic hard rock tracks and a decent rainbow cover, it's a nice 12-minute intro to the band and Lizzie's unique vocals. A year later, they'd put out their excellent debut album, Love You to Pieces. The cover features a hot 80s metal chick wearing lacy lingerie and laying in a fancy bed, with Lizzie Borden reflected in the mirror wielding an axe. I guess the idea is that she's kinda into it, but part of me hopes that she's just waiting to smash him in the head with that massive phone when he gets close enough. But the creepy stalker imagery was part of the point, and the band's look played just as much into the 80s slasher craze as it did 70s glitter rock. Fans who were only hearing the music were missing half the show. So the following year, Lizzie Borden would release a live concert video to fix this, The Murderous Metal Road Show. Between the studio album and the live video, Tony Matuzic would leave and be replaced by Alex Nelson. The guitar work on both the studio and the live albums are a huge part of what make them so great. In fact, Lizzie Borden sounds a lot closer to European power metal than you might expect. There are definitely some early Iron Maiden vibes musically, but once you notice that Lizzie sometimes sounds almost exactly like Bruce Dickinson, you can't unhear it. But 
but the horror elements of the show are mostly confined to two songs. In Psychopath, we see Lizzie stalk a female victim, and she gets stripped down to her lacy black teddy. Lizzie keeps singing, and it's actually pretty impressive that he's able to sing, hold the microphone, and do all that physicality at the same time. Eventually, Lizzie gets his victim shoved into his toy box and hacks her up with a big spray of blood. This is followed by the title track, where Lizzie serenades the severed head of his victim with some pretty dark lyrics despite an almost ballad-like melody. Watch as you try to run Over you I stand With my smoking girl You can't look into me now I couldn't let you go While the entire album is a showcase for Lizzie's voice, he really gets to belt out some high notes on this track. And as if this album couldn't get any better, it also has probably my favorite Lizzie Borden song, American Metal. Lizzie Borden's second album, Menace to Society, would come out later that year. I really like the album cover. The band is on a tank, and everyone has a different weapon. Lizzie has an axe, of course, and Joey gets a chainsaw for some reason. Alex has some chain, Gene has a bat, and Mike has a knife, but he seems to be distracted by something. If you ask me, he looks like he's trying to pet a dog that's just off camera. And that's the head cannon I'm sticking with. Anyway, much like the first album, Menace to Society is less glam and more straight up power rock. And again, the guitar work and solos from Gene and Alex are awesome. <laughs> to me, this is another really impressive mix of guitar-based power metal and really catchy choruses. <laughs> Lizzie Borden's third and most successful album, Visual Lies, would come out exactly one year later. Joe Holmes would fill in for Alex Nelson on this album, and Lizzie would introduce a silver metallic looking character on the cover, and in the music video for Me Against the World. I'm not made of stone. Why doesn't it ever make sense? Along with Lizzie's flashy outfit and cape, 
This album has some clear 70s glitter rock influences to it as well, especially on this song. But overall, there's a nice variety on this album, with more good songs on it than I have time to mention. I personally really like Eyes of a Stranger, which feels like it should have gotten a video. And Lord of the Flies is also freaking great. Yeah, I happen to have a copy of uh, Visual Lies here. That did well for us. Uh, we toured Japan on it, uh, Europe, and did a great East Coast tour, and that's about as far as we made it. With each album, the stage show would also get some updates with new looks and new gruesome effects. I've changed my show every year. It's gone from a very bloody theatrical show <laughs> to a really uh, high-gloss show business type show. I don't know where I'm going now. I think it's going to be more uh, back to a darker theatrical look. So is this like the, the new chapter? Of the, the it board? is. When we came off the, 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 the Me Against the World tour, um, we kind of had a falling out with the band and all that. I was held back on, on some things musically because uh, I like more simplistic stuff because you know some of the, the glitter rock stuff that I grew up on was more simplistic. Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to that instead of getting really complicated guitar-wise. Perhaps because of this, both Gene and Joe would leave the band to be replaced by David Michael Phillips and Ronnie Jude to record Lizzie Borden's fourth album, Master of Disguise. <laughs> The interesting thing about Master of Disguise is that it has a lot of progressive elements. I can see how on a cursory first listen, this album could have been a bit jarring to some devout metalheads. There seems to be some experimentation going on here with different instruments, like pianos and organs, and more progressive style songwriting ideas that still blends in heavy catchy riffs. I wasn't that familiar with this album previously, and several songs on it really surprised me. Sins of the Flesh in particular really stood out. Then there's Phantoms, with an opening that is appropriately full on Broadway. And the church bell gives an angry yell. There's a screech of pain under our broken back street lights. And then goes on to kick your face in with an awesome chorus. She keeps calling my name. Master of Disguise did get two music videos, which make no mention, visual or otherwise, of the theatrical themes found on the album, which is probably just as well since the videos are a stripped down, no makeup version of the band, and heavy on the commercial appeal. The first of these is Love is a Crime, directed by Zack Snyder. Yes, that Zack Snyder. Once you get past the opening, Love is a Crime is a decent track, 
but it's already verging on being 290s with the no shirt leather jacket combo and whoever the hell is playing the trumpet. That's the real crime. The second video was for the album closer, We Got the Power. Based entirely on the opening riff, I wasn't expecting much from this track at first. We got the power. And there's nothing that special about the verse section either. I bring out the beast and make him understand. Never turn it down. But the chorus saves the entire song, and now I love it. The grunge movement would take over just a couple years after this, and the band would essentially take off the entire 90s. But in late 1999, Lizzie and Joey would put the band back together. Well, we uh, stopped touring the Lizzie Borden uh, machine about 92. It was the summer of 92, I think, was the last tour. And then when Joey and I formed a, another band uh, called Diamond Dogs, which is like a rock and roll glitter rock band, and we pretty much just stayed in Hollywood and played every once in a while and waited for the uh, alternative movement to go away quietly. <laughs> and now we're back and we're gonna do a new record, new, new albums coming out um, beginning of the year probably. The fifth Lizzie Borden album, Deal With The Devil, would actually come out in October of 2000 with Alex Nelson back on guitar and Martin Anderson on bass. The album starts off strong with There Will Be Blood Tonight. Followed by Hell is for Heroes. I can't surrender to you. Honestly, the more I listen to this album, the more I like it. I still think the first half is better than the second, but overall, Deal With The Devil has standout tracks and really sounds like the same band that put out the previous four albums. Sadly, Alex Nelson would pass away in 2004, and Ira Black would fill in to record the sixth Lizzie Borden album, Appointment with Death, in 2007. Now is the season of hellish descent, and lying through the consequence of to perfection without the exception. This album just isn't for me. I know people who really like it, and it's well made, and everyone sounds good. The songs aren't bad exactly, but they're just more predictable. And I don't know, less fun? It was a very satisfying record to do, because we just let out everything we had inside of us. And we uh, took all the influences from the past and we put it all into one record. Appointment with Death got a few videos, and we get a good look at Lizzie's new black and white crow style makeup and Joey Scott's new punk hairdo. In Tomorrow Never Comes, we see the band in what appears to be the filing room at a psychiatric ward somewhere. The band rocks out with no concern for the medical records and documents of hundreds of patients, but this facility should really have moved their files to digital storage by now anyway, let's be honest. Under Your Skin focuses on self-harm, specifically with teenage girls. 
The video is all in black and white, and the song just has a quality that, again, doesn't do much for me. I know it can be hard to make everybody happy, and after over a decade of being mislabeled as glam, I can see why Lizzie may have wanted to pull back from more over-the-top melodies here in favor of a more updated sound. <music> 2018's My Midnight Things is along the same lines as Appointment with Death to me leaning more into a goth pop and industrial sound than traditional heavy metal. By this point, the recording lineup was down to just Lizzie and Joey Scott, with Lizzie credited as handling guitars, bass, and keyboards. I'd be more forgiving if the music still grabbed me, but there's just a lack of variety that holds the album back. A good example is Obsessed With You, with a video where emo Lizzie is looking all depressed at a bar. The you he's obsessed with is apparently the bartender, and they spend the rest of the video having awkward, expressionless sex. Long May They Haunt Us is another weird one, where Lizzie is in some more black and white makeup before suddenly turning into a deadite. Long may they haunt us. The remaining three and a half minutes or so are basically just the chorus over and over again. But look, I'm still a huge fan of Lizzie Borden and I'll give anything they do a chance. In fact, I didn't realize how much great stuff they had until I really dove in for this video. Obviously, Lizzie himself is the main creative force behind the band, and credit should also go to his forever bandmate and brother, Joey Scott. Even though their relationship was apparently a secret for a long time, likely to help maintain the mystique of the Lizzie Borden character. It was the brother question, are you his brother? It doesn't matter to me, I don't need to know, I was just curious. If you've ever written off Lizzie Borden as a glam band, then you're missing out on some great melodic power metal. Which brings me to your homework. Love You to Pieces from 1985, Menace to Society from 1986, Visual Lies from 1987, and Master of Disguise from 1989. Every single one of these albums has amazing stuff. For extra credit, the 1984 Give Em The Axe EP is excellent, and 2000's Deal With The Devil is also worth checking out. Let me know your favorite Lizzie Borden album below, and if you agree or disagree with these picks. Thank you! We'll see you again next year!